Warren Buffett right here now to talk about the jobs market and also about the future of the economy. Warren, great to have you with us here. Thanks for having me. Finally, the light is coming yeah, through. Yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wish the weather was a little bit warmer. Um, okay, with the jobs market, since Obama has was sworn into the presidency, we've lost two and a half million jobs here in the United States. Why are you so confident that we're going to get those jobs back? Well, because it, it, the American economy works that way. I mean, we, we, we have gone through I don't know how many uh, recessions, uh, perhaps 15 in the history of this country. And for a while, we, we used to call them panics at one time, and then we called it a depression, we called it a recession now. But uh, our system overshoots periodically. And in this particular case, we had a huge bubble. Uh, mm -hmm. So the fact that there's a correction after that really is not... Uh, should not be unexpected, but our system always comes back, and it will this time, and it already is. And you think that we will come back, let's say, two and a half million jobs, or come back and recover most of it by the elections of next year? I think it, I think there's a good chance of that. It, we will come back big time on employment when residential construction comes back, and we way overproduced in houses. I mean, we were forming a million or a million two uh, hundred thousand households, and we were building close to two hundred two million residential units. Well, <clears throat> big surprise, we end up with too many houses. Uh, we're not going to blow them up. We're not going to get have kids get to start getting married at twelve or something. So, <laughs> so we, we we have a we have a, there's a natural correction, and the the only way a correction takes place is to have households formation exceed new construction by a significant amount for a significant period of time. Okay. We've had it for quite a while. And and when you see these figures of five or six hundred thousand, that means we're sopping up housing inventory. And I don't know exactly when that hits equilibrium, but it isn't five years from now. I know that. And I think it actually could be reasonably soon. But what gives you that conviction? I mean, is it something from your business that is telling you this? No, it's more just looking at the data as to how many it looks like we overproduced in the past. And okay. and, 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 and you get some feeling from absorption. We have, we do have a, a large real estate firm, the second largest in the country, uh, but we're not seeing it yet. Uh, there's no indication yet. But that, that, it's just as well we stay here at five or six hundred thousand until we really have sopped it up, and then we'll get these figures moving back to a million or a million two. And you will be surprised, in my view, how fast employment changes when that happens, because it won't just be construction jobs. It'll it'll be our carpet company and our insulation company. All those jobs move with that. It'll 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 be goods moving on our railroad. All kinds of things. So when all that happens in Warren, where is the unemployment rate going to stand? In your well, it, it it'll move down a long way. I, 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 a long way. I, well, certainly, uh, you know, I I think that uh, within a certainly within a few years we'll see it back at six. Back at six percent. I would think so. Okay. No. Um, by the end of next year? No, I don't know about that. It just depends when housing turns. Okay. Um, but no doubt, though, that the jobs market has been really spotty. Hiring has been really spotty. You know, one year, you know, one month we're up by a couple hundred thousand, the next month we're down by, you know, into, mm. you know, into just 50,000 or so. Um, why are CEOs having such a hard time hiring consistently? You well, you that? hire when you have demand. I mean, at, at our railroad, we went from 219,000, that was our peak week of, of car loadings, that got down to about 151 or 2,000. Mm -hmm. You lay off a lot of people when that happens. We're probably, leave aside the flood problem, but we're, we're our normalized, we're probably at about 190,000 now. You add a lot of jobs when that happens, but you don't add jobs unless you've got more cars to carry. And, and that is true in all our businesses. That's true, you know, whether it's in our brick business, which where we're down a lot on employment, or our carpet business where we're down a lot on employment. At the other hand, on Geico, we've got record employment. So it, you respond to demand if you're a businessman. And, and, and all this talk, you know, you hear a lot of talk about, everyone wants to talk about jobs. Well, jobs come with demand. And you're not seeing the demand, but... Well, we're seeing demands in a lot of places, but we're not seeing it in the construction field. Right. It, it, it's not it's not consistently across the board. Then, then is it misguided, you know, in many ways to, to look to the White House? to try to help create jobs. I mean, Obama's got this jobs council. He you know, keeps keep creating all these councils to create jobs. Is it misguided that way? Well, it, 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 people may have to get their expectations too high. I mean, it, the if you, if you look at these 15 recessions we've had since we became a country, and during half that period at least, nobody knew what monetary policy or fiscal policy was. I mean, we cured ourselves, and, and the system cures itself. And I say, I would say that that's the biggest single factor. Government can do things to make it worse, and they did in the Great Depression. Uh, and government can help some, uh, but, but is the president making it worse? This no, 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 no. The president's not. No, no. The, 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 
we know the things to do that that can help, but they are not in my view, the prime determinant. I mean, there are things to work through. If you have too many houses, what can government do? I mean, you know, like I say, they can say, all well, the 12-year-olds should get married, and then we need a lot of houses. They can say, well, we're going to blow up a million houses or something. But as a practical matter, you've got low interest rates. That helps, you know. But that still can be pushing on a string to a degree until you decide to buy a house. Uh, and, but it does mean when you decide to buy one, it's easy to do uh, uh, compared to other periods. So government gets blamed too much and it gets it may get too much credit when the when when things do improve but government's a factor but i would say by far the biggest factor in corrections of the business cycle over time is what i would call the natural regenerative powers of capitalism capitalism works because i know you have a pretty close relationship with the Mm -hmm. president um back in 2007 at a fundraiser you said that obama could quote lead us to the right place yeah. Has he led us to the right place? I think he's leading us to the right place, yeah. I, I, I don't think it's easy to do. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it takes some cooperation from Congress. But I, he has ideas about what America can and should be that are in sync with, with, with mine. It, uh, it's some of its social issues and, and, and some of its distribution of, uh, of wealth and that sort of thing. Like uh, what? What in a lot of issues? Well, I, I, think, I, I think, for example, that uh, we've had a period in the last... 15 years where the 400 top taxpayers in the United States, if you go back 15 years, they had an average income of about 45 million. Now they have an average income of 350 million in the most recent figures, whereas their tax rates went from 27% down to 16%. Mm -hmm. That's not my idea of of America. I mean, I I want everybody to get rich, but I think that the the, the rich have a responsibility to to pay higher tax rates. So that's when you hear him say, targeting the millionaires and the billionaires, you're saying, go get them? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, me. I, well, no, I look, no, I look around at my friends here paying lower tax rates than the people that are serving us the food. Uh, but it, do it, they it, agree with you? I mean, when you're here at Sun Valley talking to them, do they agree with you? I think some do. Yeah, some do, and, and many don't. But, uh, and are they still talking to you? <laughs> oh, yeah, they talk to me. I mean, uh, they figure I'm harmless. And, you know, <laughs> this, this guy will only be around a few more years. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the debt ceiling, I know, is a big concern for you. Um, yesterday you said something to the effect that, you know, we're not going to get a reasonable solution when you've got a gun to your head. Um, what if we don't get a deal, Warren? What happens? Well, nobody knows, and that's why it's a crazy... I mean, what, what, you, what you do, if you don't get a deal, you are putting a gun to your head, and you're saying this this cylinder has six chambers, and there's we're going to stick a bullet in one and spin it and, and, and pull the trigger and see what happens. Nothing may happen. Nobody knows. We have, we have you know, we don't have a, we don't have a parallel for it in the past, but it's crazy. I mean, uh, which would you rather have borrowing in the markets five years from now? A, a, a U.S. government that's that's interrupted payments because of a squabble, you know, within its Congress, you know, 535 people that couldn't get together when they knew for months that something was coming up that was important, or would you rather lend to somebody that promptly? Does what's necessary. But you, you, you could say um, that you know it is the United States. What other alternative do you have though to put your? Oh, mind? I don't. I, yeah, the United States is. We're a very special place. There's no question about it. And and we will pay our debts in the end. So it, it is not like if we don't pay, we can't pay. We've got the right to print our own money. That's the key. <laughs> Greece lost the power to print their money. If they could print drachmas, they would not have. They, you know, they'd have other problems. Right. But they would not have a debt problem. And and. 17 countries in Europe gave up the right to print their own money. That's enormously important, and, and we've got the right to print our own money, so okay. our credit's good. <laughs> I want. Well, the sun has most definitely come up here in Sun Valley. Beautiful. Uh, and this, of course, is a big gathering every year where all the moguls, the media moguls, come together to talk about deals, but also to bring their children together. It's a great family vacation. Warren Buffett as you know, has been coming here for, what, 20 years, I think. Close. <laughs> um, he's gone on the record recently saying that he is eager for more big acquisitions, basically an elephant gun. His elephant gun is reloaded. Back in February, he told shareholders, quote, well, that's what he said. He said, our elephant gun has been reloaded and my trigger finger is itchy. Using Buffett's own criteria for acquisitions, well, we came up uh, with three possible takeover targets here at Bloomberg. Archer Daniels Midland, General Dynamics, and also Exelon are three big companies that may, in fact, fit into the Berkshire fold. And Warren, I want to ask you, have you ever looked at those companies? Sure, I'm familiar with all three of them. Yeah? (laughs) Yeah, My son worked for one of them. Right, Howard Buffett worked for ADM. Right, right. right. 
Um, any of those interest you? <laughs> I, 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 I want to give you a big story, but I wouldn't give it to, <laughs> to you on an acquisition. <laughs> okay, but they've been on your list. Those, those are the kind of companies we look at, sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you, it's been a few months since you've said your elephant gun is reloaded. Um, have you gotten more pitches, or what's happened since Well, then? we used... You know, uh, close to nine billion uh, on, on Lubrizol. Yeah, right. now that hasn't closed yet, but but the, it will, and and so that nine billion is out the window, and so that that the gun doesn't have quite as many bullets as it did, but but it rebuilds as it goes along, and and we, we bought some equities that we probably spent four billion on or something Which like ones? that. <laughs> Which ones? Which uh, ones? Do Can these stocks have yet? names? Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. Do they have ticker symbols? <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything. Uh, so. But what, well, what space are they in? Can you say that? Mm, they're in the space of common stocks. <laughs> you, the, uh, but they're not so, technology, I bet. No, well, uh, who knows? Uh, in any event, we would like to find. We're always looking for for companies we can buy, okay. and and we can't buy quite as big a one as we would have been able to if we hadn't done Lubrizol, for example. But right. the, but the gun does get reloaded as, as 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 money comes in. Well, could we see another acquisition, let's say, by the end of this year? I would hope so, but I wouldn't want to bet on it. You know, I, I, there's nothing in the works right now. And and and, uh, uh, but the phone can ring tomorrow. That's that's the way it happens. Mm -hmm. Warren, have you changed your criteria at all? You know, when when people or, or, or banks when they come up and pitch you, you know, pitch you ideas or wherever the ideas come mm -hmm. from, um, has your criteria changed at all from today? than it did, let's say, a year or two ago in terms of, you know, what are the first questions you ask? Or, no, not, not from a year or two ago. Over time, it's gotten bigger just because of, uh, our resources have grown. But but other than that, the, the way we look at businesses does not change. Okay, and nothing about the economy has... has, has the economy never changes how we feel about a business. I mean, I, I, uh, when my partner, Charlie Munger, and I talk about a possible deal, we don't talk about the economy. Uh, it's there, but we know if we... If we live another 20 years, we're, we're going to have we're going to have a, a dozen good years, a few terrific years, and a few terrible years. Mm -hmm. You know, and we don't know in which order they're going to appear, and it doesn't make any difference. I mean, if, if Coca-Cola came along in 1886, you know, and it went through depressions and all kinds of things, it, there probably was not a good time to sell Coca-Cola. You know, if you sold it 10 years ago, you'd have sold it at a very fancy price, but you never know that at the time. Right. Overall, overall, we stick with good businesses. Mm -hmm. Uh, here, Warren, you know, at Sun Valley, uh, obviously, you know, a lot of people are here talking about deals. Um, are you tempted at all to buy into technology at all? I mean, I know you've been averse to technology mm -hmm. companies, but ha or have you? I'm tempted to buy companies I understand. And if I find one I think I understand, we would we would buy into it. But but uh, but it's, there... it's not because of the name tech. It's because I, my criteria involve buying companies where I think I know what they're going to look like, and by that I mean their competitive position in five or ten years. And that's a lot easier to do if it's Wrigley's chewing gum than if it's a tech company. Uh, let me, um, Eric Schmidt, you know, the chairman of Google, um, he made some comments recently about some of the major tech companies. I just want you to hear what he had to say recently. Let's roll that sound bite. There are four companies which are exploiting stra platform strategies, I think, very well. Obviously, one of them, in my view, is Google. The other three being Apple, Amazon, and Facebook. Um, and each of them, uh, we, we've not in our industry, and I've been doing this for 35 years, uh, we've never had four companies growing at the scale that those four are in aggregate. Warren, did you ever feel you missed the boat on any of those four companies? Well, I did miss the boat, but I, but I don't mind missing boats that I don't know enough to captain. <laughs> <laughs> but really, for somebody who, who knows derivatives, Warren, I mean, those are some of the most uh, complex financial instruments I would say known to man. You can't wrap your head around some of these tech companies. Well, no, they, they, I, I don't think I can understand all derivatives by a long shot. Or, you know, <laughs> well, uh, but more no, than I, most. well, just yeah, but a few. I mean, and, and uh, I don't have to understand everything. I, it, I just have to be right about the things that I do. It, it, Tom Watson, senior, one time said, "I'm no genius, but I'm smart in spots, and I stay around those spots." And and there's a there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, so I don't. I don't have to be right on hundreds of things. I don't have to be right on dozens of things. I can just be right on a few things as long as I know the game in that arena. You were talking with Mark Zuckerberg yesterday, right? Right. What do you think of him? I think he's terrific. It was a very interesting conversation. I think, and I, and I think that, uh, that uh, Priscilla, his girlfriend, is terrific, too. What did you talk about? A lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> about his business? Oh, we talk, yeah, but we talk about a lot of personal things, too. Mm -hmm. 
had, did he try to get you to sign on to Facebook? No, no, he doesn't. <laughs> uh, he's got he's 